Are you ready? Let's make some sourdough starter. Welcome to Make and Make It. So today we're gonna to do something that has been requested quite frequently on my social media pages and recently through my blog. Um, and that is how to make a sourdough starter. So on my blog, I tend to post sourdough recipes because I absolutely love to use my sourdough. My family loves sourdough. So today I'm going to just show you how to make a sourdough starter. Now this is gonna be it's gonna take me quite a while to go through this because it takes a week to create a sourdough starter. So make sure that you have a week to where you can start a sourdough starter. Don't think that you, you know, <laughs> one of those things where I'm, I'm gonna go on vacation and then come back and continue to work on the starter. No, this is a process. And so for the process, we need about a week to make this starter. So it's gonna go quick on here because you're not gonna see all the extra days and all the other stuff that I do. One of the other things that I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do a Kamut starter. So a while back I had a Kamut starter because I buy my Kamut or I was buying my Kamut from the Food Nanny and I absolutely love her and I will link her below because she talks all about Kamut. I, I will also, um, try to make sure that I link some blog posts below because I go a little bit more in depth about Kamut. Um, and then I'm also going to create a link um, for a, you know, if you prefer to read instead of watching the video on how to do the starter, then I'll have it all listed for you and we'll talk about sourdough and all that. So I'll keep all of those links together down below in the description box so that way you can click, click any of those that you want to. Now, for this, this is gonna be a learning process for me. So I've had a Kamut starter a while back because like I said, I ordered my Kamut from the Food Nanny and I absolutely loved it. However, I wanted to start grinding my own flour. Um, and Kamut is a, lo a little lower on the glycemic index and so I, I use Kamut for myself. I'm not a diabetic, but I do have PCOS and endometriosis and so I like to watch my sugar and try to keep it down. And this is one of the ways that I do that if I wanna enjoy bread and I love bread, that's a problem. But anyways, beside the point. So I use a Kamut. So I started, I bought a Nutri-Grain meal and once again, I'll link that video of where I opened it up and how we used it and how much we love it and all that fun stuff uh, below in the description box. But so today I went ahead and I ground up some Kamut flour to begin this process because I killed my Kamut sourdough starter when I transferred over to a whole grain Kamut. Yes, and that was really, really upset. So I haven't had any Kamut for several months now because I was in the middle of school and just this and that and the other and I didn't have time to really be at home to make sure that I get it started. So in the process of this movie, not only am I going to start one with my flour, which I personally use. Now look, we'll go into more detail on this on the blog post, but I personally use um, unbleached all-purpose flour for my starter that I have and that I've had for quite some time and this is Dot which I introduced her in a little short um, in honor of my grandmother that I keep here um, and I in in the fridge and then out here but we'll go through all that later like I said blog posts everything so because I don't want to hinder you on here because we got things to do anywho so this is this today this is day one um, of when we're gonna start this and we're gonna do day one of uh, all-purpose and we're gonna do day one of Kamut. Now, I have a permanent marker that's gonna tell me, you know, which one is which so that I know. And honestly, you can kinda, for whole grains and for the unbleached all-purpose, you can kinda tell the difference in the color. They're a little bit different, but to keep things smart and intelligent so that we don't mess up because my brain functions that way, we're gonna make sure we write it on, on the front of the thing. So what you're going to do is, now I personally have, and I don't know if you're watching this and you have the canning funnels, you can use those. I like that to, to use to put my flour into my jar. I do have these type of jars. I like them just because I end up, I, a lot of times because I make stuff, I don't want it overflowing. So this is my, this is my preference of a jar. It's a half a gallon a jar. Um, the lid, I don't know if you can see that right there, it's a bigger mouth type of lid. That way this can fit inside of it. And then on top of it, I put, um, this one has just a, 
oh my word, my brain went like, it's like a tea towel to where you can strain things and I, cause I've, I've made my own medicines and stuff like that. So I, I use those quite frequently, but for this, it's just, that's it. A little cloth that goes over the top of it. And I have it with a rubber band that I can put on the top of that. So for day one, let's go back to this. And I know I, I sound like I'm random off the board and I apologize. If you watch these, I hope you enjoy them and just overlook me. Anywho, for day one, do this again. <laughs> day one, we're going to do for both of them, we're going to do one cup of flour and then we're gonna add our water. And on the water, now look, so many people tend to add water and they're like, oh, you gotta add three-fourths cup of water to one cup of flour or whatever it is that they do. I'm sorry. I personally do not do that. And anybody that I have shown how to do it, people that I have given my starter to, and I've told them how to keep it at a consistent basis, I always tell them it's going to depend on your home, how your starter reacts, because it works with your environment. Here, we keep it super duper cold in, at nighttime, and so my starter, to, it, it's just, it's used to it. For you, it might be something different. It, the rain affects it, the winter affects it, the summer affects it, everything affects your starter, and you're gonna have to learn your starter on your own. I can't tell you how that's gonna work. But for me, when I tell people how to feed their starter, I always tell them, for me, what works is to make it the consistency of a pancake batter. Now, there have been a few times that my batter is a little bit thicker than pancake batter, but not by much. So your aim is the consistency of pancake batter. So I personally use spring water. People say use filter water. I have used my faucet water. I may get haters on here that's like, you shouldn't use that because the gas is in it and da 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 da. I use what I had. That's, that's the way I see it. I use what I had, but preferably you want to use a filtered water so if you can afford it or you have a way to get filtered water i was using my brita filter there for a while and then my filter went out and i just haven't ordered one and you know anywho so i bought water at walmart so that i could do it so we're just going to add enough water to get the consistency that we want of a pancake batter now here's the thing if you make a mistake, you put too much water in, add a little bit more flour. It ain't gonna kill you. It, it's, it's, this thing is so, so flexible. I've had so many people, they're like, but I kill it. I can't do it. And I'm like, seriously? I mean, like, I kill plants. My family would bring home plants. And, and I was like, they were like, oh, you're coming home with us to die so that she can kill you. And I'm like, seriously, that's so mean of you. But now I can do well plants. But beside the point, this sourdough starter is super duper easy. So this is day one and let me get a mixed up here for you. Okay, so day one consistency. I don't know, it's kind of hard for me to let you see that. I don't know. I really don't know how to show this to you. <laughs> Let's see. Let me pull my spoon out because you want to stir it with a spoon I prefer okay don't kill me again but I prefer to use plastic just because the wooden ones are a little harder to do but I'm sure people like wood can you see that see how it it just I don't know it's I don't want to spill it in the floor but you can see how it's, it's literally pancake batter okay so this is what I'm doing for day one we're gonna make this together we're gonna put this on here and then we're gonna put the cover on the top like that just like so put our little ribbon on it okay and we're gonna let it sit preferably in a warm area for 24 hours this is day one we'll go to day two in a minute okay day two unfortunately I did not I don't know. I guess I didn't push record. Welcome to my world. Bone chaos. Anyways, the point is, is that you need to discard half of your starter. Now, I know that sounds like a waste. Unless you're going to start another starter, it really is no good. Like, this is just a waste. So, uh, what you do is you discard half of it, and then you turn around and you um, add another cup of flour into the bottom. 
and then you add your water. Same process as day one. You're gonna come back to it in 24 hours. We're gonna do this for day three, day four, and day five. today I want to address a few things that I missed earlier and as you know I'm new at creating instructional videos and so I'm learning as I go and I really do appreciate your patience and your understanding but let's dive into some important details that I should have covered from the start sourdough bread is loved for its rich complex flavor and its health benefits the natural fermentation process makes the bread easier to digest and can increase nutrient availability it also helps in regulating blood sugar levels, which is especially beneficial for those with conditions like mine, PCOS, and endometriosis. So over the course of seven days, your sourdough starter is going to undergo several changes. On day one, you might not see much activity. By day two, you should see some bubbles as natural yeast begins to ferment. And by day three, more noticeable bubbling and a tangy smell should develop. Each day, your starter will become more and more active and fragrant, indicating that it's coming to life. Now, I prefer using unbleached flour because it retains more of a natural nutrients and wild yeast needed for fermentation. Unlike bleached flour, which undergoes chemical treatments that can inhibit fermentation, unbleached flour supports a healthy and active starter. And I'm also using Kamut flour for its unique properties. Kamut's lower on the glycemic index, which I've already said. It's better for managing blood sugar levels. And it also has higher nutrient content and enzyme activity, which can lead to a more active starter. Now, one interesting thing that I've noticed is the difference between activity between the Kamut starter and the unbleached all-purpose flour starter. It excites me. The Kamut starter is bubbling so much more vigorously and showing more growth. Now this is likely due to the higher nutrient content and enzyme activity in Kamut flour, which provides a more robust environment for the natural yeast and bacteria to thrive. The other thing we talked about is filtered water. Now this is crucial because tap water can contain chlorine and other chemicals that may inhibit the fermentation process. I'll spit it out here in a minute. Filtered water ensures that your starter develops the natural yeast and bacteria necessary for healthy sourdough culture. Now, I told you I've used tap water in the past when necessary. Filtered water is always the better choice if you have access to it, okay? But don't fret if you don't. Now, now that we've covered all of those important points, I wanna get back to the starter. And I wanna show you what we've done. Remember, sourdough is flexible and forgiving process, so don't stress so much about all the exact measurements and the minor mistakes, because I'm learning along with you. And together, we're gonna to create some wonderful sourdough starter, okay? So, let's check it out and see how our starter is doing today. Well, well, <laughs> tell you to smell it. You can't even smell it, you're in a camera. Oh, I'm so sorry. No, what day are we on? Oh, here we are on day three. This is my Kamut. Look at those bubbles in there. Oh, I've already been messing with it. And it's the same thing with the other one. Okay. You should be noticing some nice little bubbling and a little bit of a sour aroma starting to develop. So this means that your starter is progressing really well. So we're going to, we're going to discard half of this like I did yesterday. And then we're going to put in one cup of flour and a little bit of water, just enough to make it that thick pancake consistency of a batter, okay? All right, so I'll see you tomorrow on day four. Seriously, if only you people knew what I do behind the scenes that you can't see and how dumb I feel.
So we're on day four of our sourdough starter journey. Okay, so today we're gonna check it out and see what it's like. So I have already looked, I'll just tell you, okay, because this is day four and you're supposed to notice your starter is gonna become a little bit more active. And so I'm gonna show you like over what I'm talking about right here, what it looks like. Because at first you can see my Kamut and how it's looking. Um, and you see it's got lots and lots of bubbles. So it's something, it's with the flower of Kamut and more protein, like I've said before, um, and it's making a difference. Now I did notice that today that the um, all-purpose, the unbleached all-purpose was a lot less as far as the bubbles go in it. So you can see that as well, but um, it's a little bit more liquidy. I don't know how to explain it. It's just a little more liquidy and you can see that. But anyways, as far as the smell, I'm starting to smell a little bit of the sour smell. So we know that the bacteria is thriving in that. So it's good. And um, we're also noticing that it's getting a little bit of rise. Now, you're not seeing it right now. Um, I saw it earlier today that my Kamut was actually higher in a rise than the all-purpose. So that's just the difference in the flowers. So I am so excited because I am ready to have my Kamut sourdough starter back. So all I'm gonna do again today for day four is once again, we are going to discard half of our starter and then we're gonna just chunk it, like I said, because we're not, I'm not keeping it, so. So what I like to do on the starters when I notice that they're being a little bit more runny and like this all purpose is, what I like to do is I like to go ahead and add my flour and then stir it really good and that way I can make sure how much water I need to add because I, I want it thick. I don't like it when it is runny like this. This is not a good consistency for when you're trying to work on your sourdough. Um, so I'm going to do that today um, to, get it, to uh, get it to the consistency that I want it. Um, but we are getting closer because tomorrow is day five and I'm really excited to see what's gonna happen. So we're gonna discard half, add one cup of flour, enough water to make it a pancake batter consistency, little thick. Um, and then we are going to let it sit for another 24 hours. So I will see you on day five. Okay, so this is day five of feeding our sourdough starter. And I will say this, <laughs> that even though I try to put my kitchen to bed every night, you have forced me to make sure that I don't go to bed until I actually do it. So it may look like a mess behind me, but it's clean, I promise. So on day five, um, you'll see here where my Kamut doesn't look like it's bubbling as much as it was yesterday, um, but it smells more sour. The all-purpose, the unbleached all-purpose flower one, it is bubbling a lot more. It looks a lot better than it did yesterday. Um, however, it still smells like flour. I, I don't really smell too much of a sour smell in it yet. So that's the difference on day five. Now, one of the other key things I wanna tell you, because this is the last of our 24 hours, starting tomorrow, we are going to, on day six, we are going to feed it for 12 hours. Okay, so this is day five. We're gonna let it sit for 24 hours and then tomorrow we're gonna come in and we're gonna feed it in 12 hours. I need to make sure you understand that, 12 hours. Now, I was gonna give you a little tip and trick. So you can, so I have seen some people that will actually put a marker spot right here on their jar to show where it is starting so that they know how much it has risen. Um, I've seen them put a rubber band around it so they know how much it has risen. That's completely up to you. I personally don't do it just because I eyeball it and I can kind of know when it's ready. I can tell when it's at its peak because that's the point that you're going to want to uh, be able to bake something. Now there are discard recipes, which is the stuff that we're discarding or whatever once, once your starter has gotten um, good and fermented. Um, you can do discard recipes, which I have on my blog. Um, there's just all sorts of recipes out there of things that you can do. Um, but for right now, I just wanna make sure you understand that if you wanna start keeping an eye on it to see how much it's rising, you can either one, put a marker on it here, or you could put a rubber band around it and then you can see how much it's rising from there. Your choice. So you're gonna so. discard half and then you're gonna feed it one cup of flour and remember as much water as it requires to make it a pancake 
batter consistency. A little thick, okay? So don't forget that. Okay, so now when I stirred that, I do smell the yeast and the unbleached off of this. I actually smell it stronger now um, once I stirred it and got it dumped out and discarded. So it's getting there. I said it was Sunday. It ain't Sunday. Today is Saturday. Tomorrow is Sunday. This is my first instructional video. Wow. Do you see a lot of that tooth, that tooth, that tooth, that tooth? <laughs> okay, so this is day six. <laughs> my days are getting longer. It's a Sunday and so yeah, it's been busy. So ignore my few little dishes left there. Our dishwasher's completely full. We had a nice little dinner when we got home from church this afternoon. So let's explain, let's talk about it for just a minute. All right, so day six. So this one, the all purpose is starting to smell like sourdough, like legit sourdough. And I'll show you a picture of what it looks like on the top. So nice little bubbles. It's a little runny to me. But, I mean, I don't know, yesterday it wasn't as runny and today it is. The Camus flat out stinks. <laughs> and I have a sensitive smell. But this stinks. I mean, it stinks so bad. So, it's still nice and bubbly, looking really, really good. But I guess they're gonna find out tomorrow because, so remember, we're gonna feed it now and then we're gonna feed it in 12 hours. So I'll be doing this in the morning, again with you feeding it for the 12 hours. And then another 12 hours, another 12 hours. So this is day six that we're starting on. So we're gonna feed it in 12 hours. So for instance, well, I can't see my time because my daughter has dessert going, super yummy dessert. And maybe I can show you a little bit of that when she gets done. It's the first time her making it by herself. So we're very proud of her. Um, hot fudge cake by the way but anyways um so i'm gonna i'm gonna discard half and then i'm gonna feed it a cup of flour and enough water to make it a thick pancake batter consistency just like what we've been doing okay so we're gonna come back in 12 hours okay so i will see you back here in 12 hours because we're gonna feed it twice for day six so it's gonna feel weird because it's gonna be a whole nother day for me but this is day six so we're gonna feed it 12 hours and then another 12 hours. So we're gonna feed it twice on day six. So the, I'm feeding it, this is day six, and I'm getting ready to feed it for the first part of the 12 hours. So I'm gonna discard half, and then I'm gonna feed it a cup of flour and so much water. You can see here how the um, all-purpose is doing really well. It's really bubbling. It's got that, starting to get the the sour smell and everything to it. So it's doing really, really good. The Kamut, I'm still trying to figure it out. Um, since it is all, you know, whole wheat, um, it's, a, it's reacting differently than what my all purpose does. So I'm, I'm learning it and then I'm sure there's somebody out there that knows more about Kamut. So don't take my advice. This is just an experiment for me. And once I get it thriving and going, then I could probably tell you a little bit more, but for now, <clears throat> this is what I have. So you can see the difference between the all purpose and the difference between the Kamut and how they look. Now I did feed the Kamut a little bit less this time around because I'm trying to save my flour for when I go to make my bread because I want to see how it's going to turn out um, at the end of this. So we shall see. That's, that's all I can tell you. So I have a really quick and simple, um, I say quick, it's an overnight, but an overnight uh, bread machine sourdough recipe that you can find out 
more about. I have that recipe linked on my blog post and I'll link it in the description box below um, of how to make this in a bread machine. So if you have a bread machine, then that's what you do because I'm actually getting ready to make some of my Subway rolls that are on there too because my kids absolutely love those. Um, but anyways, so discard half and then feed it your one cup of unbleached all-purpose flour and then enough water to make it a thick pancake uh, batter consistency. And then I will see you back here in my 12 hours, but you're like, what, five seconds? We'll see you then. Okay. I, I about feel like I look. <laughs> It's been a long day. My daughter's getting ready to go to camp and we were trying to get rooms done before. Anyway, she left and I, I, I tend to bite off more than I can chew sometimes. So anyway, so it's really late and I'm tired. But anyway, so I went ahead and I fed this. It's, it's been the 12 hours. I fed this, the all purpose, little runny, but it smells like sourdough. So I'm thinking tomorrow, um, I know after the two 12 hours, it should be ready by that, that next day. So. I'm pretty sure that one's gonna be ready. The commute has been like a learning lesson. Like I said, if you're gonna, if you wanna do a commute starter, don't follow my directions. Mine's just a theory and it's just what I'm testing for myself. Um, once I got thinking about it, I thought, you know what, I'm, I'm a dummy. I have a book. This is my all time favorite book for the love of sourdough. Um, I absolutely love her book. Um, and she talks about how that they start the commute in here. Now it doesn't say whole wheat. It does say um, their all purpose blend from the food nanny. So if I'm gonna do, if you were gonna follow something else, I, I, would, I would definitely follow somebody else <laughs> than me. Now the all purpose, the unbleached all purpose, yeah, you ain't gonna have a problem if you follow the directions that I've given you for that. Um, but if you decide to delve into a whole wheat or something like that, I, I would definitely check out the food nanny um, and see if she has a recipe. If if she does, I'll link it. I, I'm not sure. I didn't see one, but I know she has one in this book. So you may have to purchase the book um, to get the recipe. So that being said, I will see you back here in the morning at in well, whatever time in 12 hours from now, and maybe I'll look a little bit more awake than what I do now. Okay, my friends, today it is day seven, day of reckoning. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> it's the day that we find out if our sourdough starter is actually ready. So you, we'll feed it this morning, and then what I would do, what I recommend, is that you do exactly what I told you before. This starter has definitely doubled in size. It looks really, really good. I think I could probably bake something today on it. I'm pretty sure. Because it just smells like sourdough. So. Put your mark, when you when you discard half of it this morning, go ahead and put your mark on there where it starts and then that way you know when it doubles in size because if it doubles in size and you got all these really nice little bubbles that are all up in there, all them good bubbles, if it does that, this starter is ready to go and you can make your bread. Now, I recommend, <laughs> if you have a bread machine, then yes, I recommend my bread machine sourdough recipe because you can, if it doubles in size today, then tonight you can put it on before you go to bed and then feed your starter with, you could take the, the part out and feed your starter then and then go ahead and like make that bread recipe and that would be awesome. And then in the morning you can turn it on, you follow the directions, turn it on and then within an hour you'll have bread in the morning in the bread machine. Um, for another bread recipe, I can link one for you. Um, and then that way you can go ahead and make you some sourdough as well. Uh, I would make some right now out of this because it's it's doubled in size. However, I'm wanting to try out my Kamut, so I'm probably gonna do that first um, and then do one out of the all-purpose, um, unbleached all-purpose. So we'll see. I, I, I have something in my head that I'm thinking that maybe I'll either do um, the bread machine with this one so I can show it to you and then do the um, Kamut in my normal form of the, my Lord, I can't even think of what it's called. Stretch and folds, do the commute with the stretch and folds. And the only reason why is because I, I wanna see it. I wanna see if it's gonna give me any bubbles or not. Now, one other thing that I wanna say, when it's in the bread machine, if you do use a bread machine, you're not gonna see the bubbles that you typically see when you 
take the time and do stretch and folds and all that kind of stuff. There are a lot of professional people out there that know what they're doing. I am not that person. I am simply a homemaker who wants to make sourdough bread and I enjoy it and the people that have bought it from me and have even, I've just given it and gifted it to, they love it. And so I don't, I don't make a living off of making sourdough bread. So if, if this instructional video was not professional enough for you, then I'm sure there are other ones out there and, and my feelings will not be hurt because I was just asked to do this because I've done it and I know how to do it and I wanted to simplify it for you. So I hope I have done that in this instructional video. I hope that you have enjoyed this so far. Um, it's been an experience. I'm done for it. I'm ready for it to be over with. I am so tired. Of course, I'm tired. I didn't tell you I'm tired because my daughter's going. But anyways, to camp. So anyways, all right. See you here in 12 more hours. So this is the Kamut. And it is doing awesome. We haven't even hit the second 12-hour mark yet. We're about halfway through to it. So it's looking great. All purpose. Woo wee. Look at them bubbles. They are great. Looking amazing. And it has risen quite a bit. So this is definitely ready. Okay, so here we are at the end of our second set of the 12 hours on day seven. And our starter is looking great. You can see, i show you the little pictures here. It's now ready for any sourdough recipe that you wanna tackle. So now that your sourdough starter is alive and active, there's a bit of maintenance required to keep it thriving. Okay, many people give up too soon because of this, but I am here to tell you that sourdough is actually very forgiving, okay? You can store your starter in the fridge for occasional use, and this has been wonderful for me. I mean, like, it's, it's exactly what I love to do. Um, it prevents waste, it saves my flour, and the cold slows down the fermentation process. So this way you only need to feed it once a week or even every other week. Now I've heard people going longer, but I haven't personally tried it. Um, I once had my mom babysit mine um, because I was gonna be gone longer than two weeks and she was so terrified that she was gonna kill Dot. Um, but Dot survived. So I usually make a loaf of bread, cinnamon rolls, biscuits, or something delicious when uh, within like a couple of days, and then pop the starter into the fridge. Um, pulling it out of the fridge makes the best uh, sourdough biscuits, like ever, okay? So for this method, you just need to take your starter out, let it come to room temperature, unless you're making biscuits, discard some, use it in a discard recipe, and then you're gonna feed it as usual. Now, I often take mine out the night before I need it. I make some biscuits with the discard, freeze them, and then feed the starter so it's ready for the next morning. And I've also taken it out in the morning, made my biscuits, fed it, and then made bread to rise for the next day. So if you're planning some type of crazy baking thing or something, you can feed your starter more flour to get you the amount that you need. Now I fed mine up to two cups of flour when I knew I'd be making a whole lot of sourdough stuff um, in one day and you can feed it as little or as much as you need. It all depends on you and your plants. Um, you can also keep your starter on the counter and feed it daily. But I only recommend this if you're using it and the discard every day. Otherwise, I would just store it in the refrigerator. You can store the discard in, the, in a jar and put it in the fridge when you have time to use it. Um, keeping it on the counter does mean that you have to discard and feed it daily. But don't worry, if you forget to feed it and remember it the next morning, your starter will be just fine. Sourdough is very forgiving. I can't stress that enough. So a couple things that you need to watch out for. If you leave your starter for too long, it might get like a blackish liquid on the top. I've heard people only say mold, but um, some people take that black liquid and they just pour it out and stir the starter, discard, and then feed it. I've only had what we call hooch <laughs> on mine a couple of times, and it was just a light liquid, and I was okay with that, but if it turned dark, I think I would do some research before I would even do that. I don't know. 
Um, this morning, I actually used my discard from our unbleached all-purpose sourdough starter to make a sourdough Dutch baby, and it turned out amazing. Um, I, so I, I know the starter's ready. Um, when I have a moment, I will make a video of making some sourdough bread because as you can see, the instructional videos are not my strong suit. This is my first one, but it just isn't. Um, so, end of the video. For more details, okay, including this instructional in written form, you can check out my blog that I will link in the description and you can find out, find so many more sourdough recipes on my blog at makeandmakin.com. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and hit the bell icon to get notified of my future videos. Thank you so much for sticking with me through this journey. Happy baking!